Hi, everyone. My name is Blake Cadwell. I'm the co-founder at Soundly.com, where we talk about all things hearing and sound. And today I'm joined by Dr. Amy Sorrow. We're going to be talking about musical ear syndrome. It's a symptom that many people don't know about, but some people have experienced. And we want to talk a little bit about what's happening um, when someone hears music that isn't audible to other people around them. So, um, Dr. Amy, maybe you can just start by giving us a sense for what musical ear syndrome is um, and just some background on it. Musical ear syndrome, it really fits into the sub, a subcategory of tinnitus, um, which, by the way, can be pronounced tinnitus or tinnitus. They're both considered correct. Tinnitus in general uh, is when somebody perceives sound. It could be ringing, whistling, buzzing, humming, chirping, cicadas, different types of sounds when there isn't anything there. Musical ear syndrome is just a variant of that in that you're perceiving music that isn't really in the room around you. It's the brain wanting to have some stimulation and it's generating these sounds, which we're then perceiving as music. And they can sound like instruments playing. They can sound like a choir singing, maybe a simple melody, different types of perceptions. So if someone's experiencing musical ear syndrome, uh, what could be some of the underlying causes and should they be concerned? There are a few different causes that we know of. One of the biggest ones is hearing loss. So somebody who's had especially, let's say, severe to profound hearing loss, or they've had um, hearing loss for many years, their brain has less stimulation, especially if they haven't treated their hearing loss. Or in the case of cochlear implant recipients, um, I've heard this when they remove their processor, sometimes at night, they perceive um, the sound of music. Some other factors that might contribute or worsen this phenomenon could include cognitive decline, stress, anxiety, depression, or brain injury. So if someone is experiencing musical ear syndrome and they want to lessen those symptoms, uh, what can they do? Uh, what options do they really have? Well, there are a few things that they can do. In the same vein of tinnitus management, we don't currently have a cure for it, but we do have management strategies that can help to relieve it or make it more manageable. One of the, the best things to do is if you have an underlying hearing loss to seek treatment for it. This might be a hearing aid, this might be a cochlear implant, um, but you'd wanna be evaluated and consider your options. When the brain gets some of that sound back, that can help to relieve some of that, that uh, perception that you have. Another here is stress management. So as I mentioned, stress, anxiety, depression, these can all be contributing factors that can make it worse. And anytime we're feeling stressed, you know, we're not feeling our best. So having ways to cope with stress and um, relaxation, that's going to help, help you to feel better and get some relief from that. Some people also consider masking noise. Um, so like a white noise machine, other types of different colors of sound, brown noise, pink noise, that type of thing. And then if you are truly concerned about, you know, is there something medically going on? It doesn't hurt to be evaluated by a physician. Sometimes that gives people peace of mind also to know, okay, I don't have something that is organically wrong. This is just something that's going on with me. And it's not, it's not harmful. It's nothing to worry about. So there you have it. That's a little bit about musical ear syndrome, some of the background, what could be causing it, some of the things you can do to manage those symptoms. Dr. Amy, thank you for your time. And to you, the viewer, we wish you the best. Mm -hmm.